our Easter assembly. Um, I've recorded this assembly for you so that your tutors can play it um, as as it suits them and uh, there's less chance of it going wrong. Um, it's really nice to be able to talk to you about something other than exams and assessments. So this is um, one in a series of assemblies um, we're going to do at AUEA that celebrate the diversity of the staff and the students that we have. So you only need to look around your own tutor group to see the number of nationalities, the number of cultures and the number of faiths that are represented at AUEA. So a couple of weeks ago, um, some of the sit form students who are part of um, the Student Council, um, those that represent diversity, um, came to ask me if they could help. So I gave them some questions to go away and ask students in the student body. The questions that I asked them were, um, what Easter means to me, what I remember about Easter, or what I enjoy at Easter time. And you'll see that there's a little bit of a theme going on. We've got chocolates and we've got eggs and we've got chocolates and we've got chocolates. But amongst all of those, we've also got some, some new beginnings and some Good Friday and some resurrection of Jesus. So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time looking at the celebration of Easter, what we do as, as a nation, and also a little bit about what Christians specifically believe about Easter. So I did a little bit of Googling. OK, the thing I tell you not to do when you're doing your assignments for me. But I just wanted to see what images um, Google would bring up if I Googled Easter. But you will see that the Easter that I Googled was slightly different. So the first row is simply Easter time. We've got bunnies and we've got eggs. And the second row was the Christian festival of Easter. And the third row was specifically Easter eggs. So we've got a lot of different perspectives on Easter. And I'm going to start by having a look at the one thing that we all knew about Easter, and that was about the Easter egg. Sometimes Easter eggs are called Pascal eggs, and they the tradition of painting eggs. These are some beautiful Ukrainian eggs in my slides, but the tradition of painting eggs goes back thousands of years. Chocolate eggs are much more modern. And in some traditions, they come along with another character that you might recognise from Easter, and that's the character of the Easter bunny. Now, in some German traditions, the Easter bunny is a little bit like Father Christmas. He checks up to see which children are good and which children are bad. And he brings Easter eggs to those children who have been good and have deserved to get eggs at Easter. Now, Easter eggs in their modern form, I guess that's the one you might recognise the most, although in the slides that the answers that I got from students, cream eggs weren't mentioned, it was mini eggs. But cream eggs are a, a real Birmingham tradition. They were introduced by Cadbury's back in 1963. Over 200 million are sold worldwide each year, but they're only produced between Christmas and Easter. I'm wondering if anybody notices that there's a difference between the one on the left and the one on the right. And if you know the difference between the one on the left and the one on the right, either email me or come and tell me what you know about the difference. We've moved on from the most popular Easter egg to the most expensive, the most outrageously decadently expensive eggs were created in the Russian dynasty, when Russia was ruled by the Tsars. OK, back in 1902, the most expensive Easter egg ever sold was created and it was sold at Christie's in 2007 for £8.9 million. That beat 
the previous Fabergé egg, which was sold for £9.6 million back in 2002. That was the, win the winter egg. Now, Fabergé eggs were made for the imperial czars, the royal family of Russia at the time. They were made individually. Um, it's thought that there's possibly 69 of them altogether, but only 40, only 46 of them survive. But uh, Fabergé eggs, a real symbol of, uh, I don't know, absolute complete wealth and I guess to some extent decadence too. Um, and I think some are possibly prettier than others. So moving on to the Christian story of Christmas. Lots of artworks have been produced, including the eggs that celebrate Easter, but perhaps one of the most famous is a picture by Leonardo da, Leonardo, can't even say it, Leonardo da Vinci that depicted the Last Supper. So I'm going to talk for a few minutes about those three days over Easter that are what Christians celebrate at this time. So the Last Supper took place on traditionally the Thursday evening approaching Easter. Um, it was a time where Jesus met with his closest friends and celebrated a meal with them. Jesus had lived and taught in what we now know as Israel for 33 years. According to the Bible, he'd performed miracles and had a large number of friends and followers. But he also had enemies, the political and religious leaders were not so keen on some of his teachings that shone a light on their greed and their corruption and their hypocrisy. So they plotted to have him killed. They plotted to have him killed during a holiday time, a holiday time that was the Jewish festival of the Passover. So this is Jesus celebrating his last meal with his followers, his followers that are traditionally called his disciples. And as part of that meal, he ended that meal with bread and with wine, exactly the same as Christians do in communion services all over the world every week, where they do exactly what Jesus asked them. They remember him through that bread and through that fruit juice or that wine. And that goes right back to the last Supper. At the end of the Last Supper, Jesus was betrayed. He was betrayed to the religious and political leaders by one of his disciples, um, one whose name we probably all know, Judas Iscariot. And he was arrested and on Good Friday he was crucified. He was killed by the religious leaders um, he was accused of no crime, but he was killed alongside common criminals. And as he died, he said, forgive them, for they don't understand what they're doing. One of the traditions we have that um, is another food tradition. Lots of our religious celebrations have food alongside a hot cross buns and hot cross buns again are ancient. They go right back to potentially 6th century Greece where Orthodox Christians put crosses on their cakes. But Good Friday and Jesus' death wasn't the end of the story. So on the first day of the week, which is Easter Sunday, Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' friends, went to the tomb with a group of women. They went to do the things that they traditionally did to preserve his body. And on the way, they were worried. They were worried about who would move the stone, the stone that had been put in front of the tomb to stop um, anybody interfering with the body. But when they got there, the stone was already moved. It was already gone. There was an angel. And the angel said, he's not here, he's risen. 
go and tell his disciples. But the disciples didn't believe her. They said they needed to see him themselves to believe that he was alive again. So over the following days, Jesus appeared to his disciples to prove that he had indeed risen from the dead and told them to preach the good news. The Easter eggs that we eat are hollow to represent that empty tomb. So finally, I hope you've learned something about the traditions of Easter and the eggs and the celebrations, but a little bit too about the Christian Easter story. So it only ends for me to say to you, Happy Easter. Your tutors have got eggs for you. Um, enjoy your eggs and enjoy those of you who aren't revising for exams. Enjoy your holiday too.